I'm Natalie Griffiths. I'm an aquatic ecologist and biogeochemist at Oak Ridge National Lab. My research focuses on understanding how water quality is impacted by human activities and energy technologies. And so as a kid, I was really interested in water. I grew up in Toronto, uh, Canada, which is on the shores of Lake Ontario. And as a kid, we couldn't swim in the water because of pollution issues. And so I was always wondering, well, why can't we do that? And how can we improve water quality? And so my research at Oak Ridge National Lab is really focused on understanding those water quality impacts. It's also proving how we can measure water quality in the field. Water quality can mean a lot of different things. So one thing we can measure in the water is temperature. We can also measure dissolved oxygen. So this is a measure of the oxygen concentration in water. And low values mean that organisms that live in water, things like insects and fish, can be impacted negatively because of those low oxygen concentrations. We can also look at novel pollutants in water. So those are things like personal care products or pharmaceuticals, so caffeine, ibuprofen. We're starting to learn how those compounds affect water in the organisms that live in the water. Other novel stressors are things like plastics and microplastics. And here at Oak Ridge, I'm really focused on water quality in terms of nutrient pollution. So when we look at nutrients, we're primarily talking about nitrogen and phosphorus. And so in low concentrations, nitrogen and phosphorus can have beneficial impacts on the environment. And so the base of the food web, things like algae and bacteria, they take up those nutrients and grow, and that feeds the rest of the food web. But in high concentrations, these nutrients can have negative impacts. So one well-known example is the nutrient issues that are in the Mississippi River watershed in the United States. And so if we look at the Mississippi River, it comprises about half of the country. It's draining about half of the country. And a lot of that land is in agricultural land, things like crops, corn, soybean production. And so when these crops are grown on land, fertilizers are added to the crops to have them grow. But if you add those fertilizers in high levels or in excess, the plants are gonna take all those nutrients up. Those nutrients can run off the fields into streams that are nearby those agricultural fields. And eventually those streams go down to the Mississippi River and eventually to the Gulf of Mexico. So once those nutrients end up in the Gulf of Mexico, they can cause algae to bloom. You get these large events of algal production. And then those algae eventually die and start sinking down in the water column where they're colonized by bacteria. The bacteria then start eating up the algae and respiring, which means they take out oxygen from the water column. And so that lowers the oxygen levels, which is not good for the fish, the other organisms li that live in um, the coast. And so this actually causes what we call the dead zone each year, and we get these really low oxygen concentrations that can impact the fish and the fisheries in the area. And so this dead zone is not just specific to the, the Gulf Coast, but also coasts all across the world have these dead zone issues. And so we're really interested in understanding how those nutrients end up in the streams that then drain to these larger rivers into the coast, how those nutrients cycle in the environment, and then also how they're transported downstream. And so we can measure those nutrients in different ways. One easy way that we can do that is to go out and grab a water sample, bring it back to the lab and analyze it for nutrient concentrations. But it is a very time and labor intensive practice. So if I wanted to look at a stream and understand its nutrient dynamics, every day for an entire year, I'd have to go out to the stream, grab a water sample, bring it back to the lab, analyze it, do that again every day. And so one of the new advances in water quality monitoring is sensors. We have sensors now that can measure a lot of different water quality parameters, things like temperature, dissolved oxygen, pH, and now in the last couple of years, nutrients like nitrate, which is the nutrient pollutant that is causing those issues in the Gulf of Mexico. We can put these sensors out now into the stream. They can measure these water quality parameters every minute, even every second, so we can capture these changes over short and longer periods of time. But one of the challenges of using that type of approach is that the sensor is in one location in a stream and is measuring at that one spot. But we know that water quality can change along rivers and streams. So one example might be, what if we put that sensor down right before a big pipe was coming in and putting a lot of nutrients into the stream? We're gonna miss that. And so a technology we developed at Oak Ridge National Lab is actually putting sensors on a drone to be able to drive these drones up and down the streams and create maps of water quality, trying to find out where there are hot spots or issues in terms of water quality. So this is what we call the Aquabot. The Aquabot is a pontoon style boat and it has sensors that we've installed on in the middle that hang down in the water column. And then we can drive this boat up and down the stream with a remote control 
and we can start mapping those water quality parameters. There's a GPS unit on the boat as well, and so it gives us the latitude, longitude of where we are, and we can pinpoint then the water quality measurements made by the sensors to those specific locations. So all the data are connected to this data logger in this housing right here, and then we have a light sensor in the front also to look at the light dynamics. And the cool part about it too is that the data logger where all the data then go from the sensors has a Wi-Fi signal. So we can walk along the stream and look at our phone and look at the data in real time as we're driving up and down the stream. And so it can be used in streams pretty much as, as wide as it is. We need about a foot of water and then anything deeper, it, it responds pretty well to that. So we developed this Aquabot system to understand some of those water quality issues in the agricultural Midwest, and specifically look at how bioenergy, as well as conservation practices, might improve water quality in this area. And so one of the things about the water quality issue in the Midwest is that a lot of the area in the past was wetlands. Those wetlands are drained and then converted to agriculture, but there's still an issue of flooding. And so if there are flooding events, this has damaged the crops that are grown, and that can uh, negatively impact um, the farmers. There's active drain of these agricultural lands by things called tile drains. So what these are, is there are pipes that are put underneath the ground, under the soil, and so water percolates down through the soil, gets into these pipes, and those pipes carry water directly to a stream. So if you're walking up an agricultural stream, you might see these pipes coming in side by side as you walk up, and so those are bringing water and potentially any excess fertilizers that are applied on the fields and then get down into the stream. And so one conservation practice that farmers and conservationists and land managers are looking at is uh, what's called a saturated buffer. And so these tile drains still come on the fields, they drain the water and any excess nutrients, but instead of going directly into the stream, they enter another pipe that runs alongside the stream in a grass buffer strip. So grasses that are planted between where the stream is and where the crops are planted. And so now this water can go into that buffer strip potentially fertilize those grasses, which could be grown for bioenergy. And so now you have a win-win situation where you can grow potentially another crop, but also reduce those nutrient inputs that go directly to the stream. And so we use the Aquabot system to evaluate how those conservation practices improved water quality. So we drove the Aquabot up and down the stream before those buffers were put in and also after to see if there are any changes. And so that's just one of the many projects that we're studying here at Oak Ridge National Lab focused on water quality. Sensor technologies continue to improve and our science moves forward. I'm really excited to see what uh, future findings we have in terms of how humans and energy technologies influence water quality.